Hi, everybody. Okay, we're so excited for today's team training. This is going to be Social Media 201. So if you haven't had a chance to consume last month's um, 101, that would be a really great place to start because we wanted to make sure we broke this into digestible bites and like your bite-sized chunks so that you were really building a foundation. So I might even say like, stop listening right now and go do that one and then come back to the recording so that you're, you're just really feeling like there's a solid progressive foundation. But I don't know about you. I don't know. If, I don't know. I'm feeling like it just feels so exciting. And I feel so lucky and grateful every day to have the amazing leadership we have on this team. So we've got some amazing content today from Jen, Kim, and Stephanie. And um, we're going to just jump right in. If you have questions, again, like as always, these are going to be this is interactive, so put the questions in chat or unmute <clears throat> um, if you have specific, you know, if you want to, this is an, a learning session, so don't feel like you can't interject um, and make sure you're understanding in, in real time. So um, go ahead, Jen, and take it away. Do you, did you want to start off and do the recap or? Yeah, so yeah, that would be You great. guys see it. Let's do that first. Yep, we can see the slides. So we're going to, um, this is what we're going to be covering today. We're going to be talking about optimizing your profile, posting for engagement, the importance of really focusing on your direct messages, your DMs, niching down specifically to grow, um, recruiting as a brand, as a niche, and like how to really build a strong recruiting heavy business so that just feeds into recruiting and common mistakes and we'll have some Q&A at the end. Um, and then next slide, but as a, just as a recap, if you're like, I don't remember what we talked about in 101. So we're going a little deeper on some of these con these con this content from last time. But last time we were like really looked at like who are you talking to? Being really clear about who you're talking to. Um, platform basics, like really understanding Facebook and Instagram as a as a foundation, how to just like do baseline content planning. Um, like like understanding, like having a plan of what you're wanting to say and why. Um, really focusing on the foundational piece of just building relationships, being social on social media. Um, and then with that content, making sure it's quality and not just like posting to post and just posting to fill dead space, um, but making sure it's actually feeding your goals and your growth. Um, and then how to like take all of that and then self-reflect and really just um, kind of take an inventory of like, is this actually working? So if, you didn't watch 101. Again, I think you should just go pause. It's in our team training drive. Um, I'll put it in the chat here, but I would go back and just spend some time with that. There's no rush on this. I would, we would rather you really build a solid foundation um, and then build from that. So that was just a recap. We're going to dig a little deeper into some of this and then open some new, some new territory there. And with that, I'm going to mute and take it away. Um, the rest of you amazing ladies. Awesome. I'm, I'm off mute, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Um, I'm so excited to be here. Like, this is so fun to do this training. I'm usually doing trainings on topics of cancer. So this is actually really fun today. So I want you first of all, let's just kind of get to know where everybody's at as far as if you feel like sharing where you are as far as Instagram goes. Like, are you feeling stuck? How long have you been on Instagram? Just to kind of get to know each other a little bit. Um, there's good news for all accounts. Algorithm is going up. Specifically, if you have a smaller account and it's zero to 500, you're going to get out there the most. And the reason why Instagram is doing that right now is because they want you to stick around. So just know that um, that algorithm across the board is improving. I've been working on Instagram since the beginning. Oh my God, that ages me, but I have been. And it's been a lot of this, a lot of this. It's been fun. I've learned so much, but I think in the last few years, I was stuck at 20,000 forever. Now, listen, it took me a lot to get there and I've evolved over the years and we'll kind of dive into that in a minute, but I was stuck at 20,000 and, and going down for a while until I completely niche down and again, we're going to talk about that in a minute. I want to start with the bio, but I made a drastic change a year ago. 
and completely, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Those that don't know me three years ago. And I was, you know, with a previous company on health and fitness. And I was in the space of kind of not knowing who I was. And, and, and I think people coming to my account could recognize that. So we'll talk about that again in a minute, but I want to make sure the first thing, and especially those that are having newer accounts, smaller accounts, you want your bio set up so when people see a, something come through, because this is what happens, if all of a sudden something comes through on your, your feed and you're like, oh, this is a good reel or this is a good post, who is this person? They're going to come to your bio. So I want to start off by using the 433 method. This is Brock Johnson. If you guys don't know Brock Johnson, I definitely recommend following him. In fact, this is a great time to get out your phones and kind of look at this with me. Um, Brock and Shaleen, they're, Shaleen's one of my really good friends, but they teach a lot about this. So like if I have any question, I go to Brock's account to see what he's doing. Just a little tip. So four lines in the bio, meaning you don't want any more than four lines in the bio or they have to click more. It's another step and they probably won't do that. So then four story highlights. So when you go to somebody's, and I can't see myself right now on there, but if you go to somebody's um, account or my account, you can see, oh, why can't I see me here? Let me just do this there. Okay. So now you can see that it's, you know, my picture, you can see the four lines. There's nothing else. They don't have to click more. They're going to see all of the highlights right across here. So you want to make the most prevalent highlights at the front. And it takes creating highlights to do that. So like my highlights are discount codes. So if I'm ever talking about human grace, those are at the front post-treatment so they can tell it's cancer stuff, the cancer community diagnosed, and then some vegan ideas, because that's what I talk about a lot of my accounts. So they can kind of get, they understand right away from that, the highlights, what you're about as well, and also the bio. But again, we're going to get there in a minute. And then also your three pinned posts. People assume that your pin posts should be the ones that got the most action. And that's not the case. You want to tell a story with those first three pinned posts. So the first one should be an about you. Just a quick introduction. You can go look at, you can look at mine. You can see what I did. I did that one a while ago. Actually, I really should update it, but it still tells my story and why somebody might want to follow me and what they can expect. And then the second pin is something that I can collect an email address on. So they're opting into something. So I have a free lead magnet that's all on uh, vegan recipes, really quick, easy vegan recipes. So I can collect email addresses right at that one. And that one happens to be though, my most, I think I have over a million views on that one. And then the third one just show, ter, tells a story about who I am. It's Darren and I, and how we are husband and wife, both dealing with a cancer diagnosis. So that's the four, three, four, four, three method. It's actually four, three, three. So that's a four lines, four story highlights, three pin posts. Okay. Let's talk about your name. So you want to make sure your name. So right here, the, this name is fine. It can be just your name, but the name next to, or right underneath your picture, that's a searchable name. Now I paid for the check mark because I wanted the security purposes of it. I don't know if you guys know that, but you can pay 15, I think it's $15 a month. And you're, you know, how people will like steal accounts and hack accounts. Like you're more protected when you do that. So that's why I did that. Um, so I have to have my full name. If you do that, you have to have your full name, but then whoops. But then next to it, I put the cancer community. So something that is searchable that identifies like what your account is all about. So ideas for that is you can actually like search, you can go to the little circle button, go up to like the ask meta and search like hormone health and start looking at accounts and what they're using um, or simple swaps or low tox living. Like there's so many different um things that you can search. The other really good thing that I recommend doing is using chat GPT. I hope everybody's using it or perplexity. I use the free versions on both and I use these daily and I kind of switch them up. So you could even say, I need an Instagram name that's searchable. Here's what I'm doing. 
all on hormone health. I'm teaching people to swap out toxins. What is a good searchable name to use right now? Perplexity is really good for that because perplexity is more current. Chat GPT, chat GPT, I use like more for if I'm doing a call or need notes or I want to correct something, but perplexity is amazing. Amazing. I highly recommend it. In fact, perplexity also will give you, you know, if you want to have the stats on why using clean skincare, what are the benefits of swapping out from old skincare to the, like, it gives you a bunch of benefits to it that then you can use while you're posting. Okay. Picture should be you, your beautiful face, close up lighting, nothing in the background, not you and your spouse or your family or your pet. I know we love our pets, but it should be you bright professional. So they, um, just know who they're following. And then as far as crafting a compelling bio, again, this is something that I would utilize in chat GPT or perplexity, because you can say, here's what I'm about. This is what I'm doing. Only 150 characters. I would love to, for you to throw in some emojis. I want there to be only four lines arrowed down to something that you are going to link for them to, you know, whether it be your website or a lead magnet or whatever that is. So 150 characters, you want to be short and concise. Don't think that you have to use all 150 characters. And then emojis can kind of be fun. Look at what other people are doing. Again, Brock um, does great. Like if you just look at his, like literally, I think I said this in the beginning, I will go to his account and be like, I'm doing this post. What's the best thing right now to get people to share this? And like, what he, what is he saying? You know, comment below, share this, like this, whatever he's saying, I will get ideas from his account. Um, just start researching, play around with it, ask other people's opinions, and don't worry. I mean, you can change this whenever you want if you don't like it at first. Any questions there? No? Okay, we'll move on. So this is, I can't remember who's doing this one. It's me. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Um, and I'm going to share a little bit about posting for engagement. Um, I know a lot of us would really love to like post and pray and post and everybody buys our stuff. Um, but the goal of posting, we always want to remember is to get into conversations with people. So it's not just to post and then somebody, everybody's going to come to your inbox. Um, it just doesn't usually happen like that for a long time. Like eventually when people get to know and like, and trust you enough, um, you can get to that point. But when you're starting out, um, that's just, you know, not going to be the case. And even when you've been around for a long time, like if you're not doing your due diligence and having those conversations on the back end, like that's usually where the magic happens. That's usually where the customers happen. That's usually where, you know, everybody comes in. Right. Um, and so, so anyway, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about how to get more engagement on those posts. Um, and so knowing your audience is obviously key. Jen's going to talk more about that. So I'm not going to go like super into detail about knowing your audience. And we talked about it, you know, last time a little bit. Um, but just knowing at least like, who are they? What are they like? What are they looking for? What are their problems? Um, because again, we like to think that we can post a picture of our hydrate and detox and say, these are all the benefits of our hydrate and detox because there are so many of them. But in reality, people don't care. <laughs> like, I mean, people don't care. They're, if they see, oh, this is a hydration drink, I can go buy one of those at Publix. Um, they care about the benefits to them. And so you have to know the problems that they have in order to know the benefits that they're going to care about. Um, asking questions. So again, the point of you posting most of the time is going to be to get people to comment or to like, but especially to comment because that means, hey, I'm really paying attention. And that gives you the opportunity to respond to those people and then to take that conversation into the direct messages. Um, so asking questions like you too, can you relate to this? Who else has this problem? Um, who else was looking for a solution for this? Um, and I'm gonna get into my next slide a little bit more about like polls and just different ways to you know make that happen, but um, asking a question. If you're not going to ask a question, they're probably not going to comment 
because they're like, what am I supposed to say to this? I mean, they might say, you look so pretty or something like that if you're just posting a picture. But um, for the most part, you want to ask a question. And that also makes your people who are following you feel like you care about them and you care about what they have to say and, you know, their opinions. Um, So that also means you need to give them a call to action because confused people just they don't do anything, right? Confused people just kind of scroll on by. Um, so making that call to action, and telling them what you want them to do, right? Like comment, give me your opinion, um, tell me below, follow if you're on Instagram and trying to, you know, get some more followers that are like you and the, that you're people that you want to connect with. Um, share, like you have to tell people to do those things and they're like, oh yeah, that is really funny. I would like to share that. Um, so a way to kind of think of this, and I mean, I could go on and on, but we don't have all the time in the world is value connection, proof invitation that I misspelled. Um, I don't even know what that says. NBA in NBA town. Um, maybe it's Italian or something special. Um, but I just got this from Bob Heilig. Um, if y'all don't know who he is, um, Kim has mentioned him. Kim's been on his podcast. Um, so I've been starting to follow him a little bit more lately and he's been actually doing a free group training, But again, a lot of the things that you would share in a group are what you would share on your post. So again, like when you think about why would I follow somebody, right? You want to see value from them. Like you want, so if you know that your person struggles with low energy, how can you provide value to that person who's struggling with low energy, right? You can give them three tips to boost your energy in five minutes, right? Go for a walk, jump up and down, take deep breath, right? Um, And then connection, your connection piece is just going to be sharing about you, right? Your family, your hobbies, what you like to do, what you enjoy doing. Again, people are going to connect on that, right? Because you can say, like, what is your family like doing on the weekends? Um, And then proof and invitation are a little bit more business side. Um, But again, like you can't expect to just post about your product, like share a customer testimonial. We have tons of them in our team hub, like go in there and ask for testimonials. Um, if you don't have many customers yet, if you have customers, go ask your customers, you know, what they're loving most about their products and what they're seeing a difference in and get that proof that you can share in, um, in stories, in your posts, you know, however you do that. And then just inviting, you know, inviting into your DMS, right? Like if you're curious, like send me a message, let me know, let's talk about more and see if this is right for you. Um, okay. You can go on to the next one, Jen. So posting for engagement, um, these are just some reels um, that I've done. You can obviously go to my account on Instagram. Um, I'm Dr. Stephanie Cook too on Instagram if you want to follow along. Um, But I have really been digging into this lately and seeing a lot of results with some of these things. So, um, you know, like making people laugh is so big. And we think sometimes that like, oh, I need to like teach them all the things every day and, you know, add value, add value, add value, but like helping people and making them laugh and helping them feel heard. And like, that's a connection piece, right? Like, oh my gosh, me too. That's what you're trying to get people to say is me too, right? Um, And so like this first one, I said, point of view, your family loves Bucky's. So you are forced to go. And then in this reel, in the next spot, I'm going to Lululemon. And so my point is, you know, but then mom gets her opportunity and I go to like a real store, um, you know, and so people related to that and thought it was funny. Um, I am a homeschool mom. So I talk a lot about homeschooling. And so this little point of view, the second a friend tells you they want to homeschool, but don't know where to start. And it's Tom Cruise running, um, you know, to answer the call. Um, my oldest, this one was really funny. My oldest, anytime there's an adult conversation, not meant for his little ears. And it's like Justin Timberlake. And I don't remember who they'll, but they're like peeking in on it, you know, like always like listening in. And so that's had like 700,000 um, views and like thousands of shares and lots of comments, but like, I didn't make that up. So this, I wrote up here, reels, remixes, and polls, like, Reels are obviously very popular on Instagram and gaining popularity on Facebook, but they can be overwhelming. And that's where remixes come in. If you did not know, you can go to, if you find this reel that's really popular, like this one right here, that's these two, the Tom Cruise, all three of these right here in the middle um, that are not me in them. Somebody else used that and got tons and tons of views and likes and like, you know, engagement on it. 
And you can go to the little three dots on the bottom of that video and click on it. And it gives you the option to remix it. And when you click remix, that literally takes their reel. You're not stealing it. It's on Instagram. You're allowed to do it. And you're remixing that reel. And you take that remixed reel and you, and it puts it just like as if you were creating a reel. And all you have to do is click on the, um, the button for, to add text. And you literally like cover up whatever text they had with your text that connects to your people. So, I mean, that takes like five seconds and the caption doesn't even have to be anything creative or great. You can literally say like, follow for more mom funnies and share with your mom friends, right? And like so many people relate to that. Again, they feel seen, they feel heard. Um, they're like, I'm not alone. Um, so anyway, that's a really easy thing to do. And you can obviously Google how to remix and, you know, an Instagram reel, but it's super funny um, and super fun. And so just when you're on the toilet or when you have 10 minutes, you know, before you go to bed or whatever, like scroll through your Instagram. And when you find something like that, that's funny, click the save button or something. It doesn't have to be funny. It could just be an idea, right? Like click the little save button and you can save that into idea posts for later. And then tomorrow when you're like, what am I going to post? I didn't plan my, you know, content. You can go in there into your saved reels and be like, oh, I really wanted to remake that. Put it to your own. This one over here on the right side, um, which is me walking. It's a reel. Um, I got that idea from another Instagram. Like that was not my original idea. I just put, you know, I had saved it. And when I went back, I was like, oh yeah, I wanted to make that one. Um, and I made it myself. Like I had set up my phone. I walked toward my phone. That's just me walking, super simple. Um, and I'd saved that video and then I'd saved this idea. And it says, you can only pick two. Number one, never gain weight. Number two, endless energy. Number three, always clean home. Number four, overflowing bank account, comment below. And so I have hundreds of comments on that. Like I can't even keep up, but that's, that's what you want, right? Like, and you can easily go into the DMs and say like, hey, oh my goodness, I so relate to that. I felt the same way. And you can, some of these, you can literally go straight into, did you know that I help moms gain energy with simple toxin-free hormone safe products? Would you ever be open to taking a look? Like you can shift that that quickly on some of these things if it's relating to what you're doing. Um, so anyway, so re reels, remixes, and polls are all gonna be like, super helpful. That's going to get engagement. Um, you can even, you know, do polls on Facebook too, just like a side by side and say, you know, which dress should I wear to the event A or B people love that kind of stuff. And then, um, okay, you can go to the next one, Jen, and then I'll talk a little bit about getting into the DMS with people. Um, because again, this is the goal, right? Like have gaining new followers doesn't do you any good. If you're not having conversations, you know, having thousands of comments or likes or shares doesn't do you any good um, if you're not having conversations. If they're just seeing that one post and then they shared it or they liked it and then they move along, like that's not building your business, right? Maybe it's building your Instagram, but it's not building your business per se. Um, and so these are simple, easy things to do. And every person matters. So I don't want you to think, oh my goodness, I'm only having two people like my post or two people comment, then have conversations with those two people, right? Um, acknowledge them like, hey, thank you so much for the love on my post. I thought it was so funny. Are you a homeschool mama too? Again, like that would be right for one of my posts if I posted about a homeschool funny. Um, but whatever it is that you posted about and somebody commented on, especially, even if they just like it or love it, right? You can send them a, um, a DM, but they're especially going to be invested if they commented on one of your posts. Um, but it does not have to be about the business. Like this is a relationship business and the way to build relationships is to have conversations. Um, so just acknowledge that. And you kind of do the same thing with a new follower. So again, on Instagram, if you do some of these remixes and some of that stuff, Oh, yay, Michelle. Love homeschooling. Um, if you are doing some of these remixes, like I promise you, some of them are going to take off. Like they just are like they're super popular right now. It's simple and easy. So you're going to get a new follower or two or 10 from it. Um, and so you need to reach out to that person and acknowledge them for following you. Um, hey, thanks for the follow. I'm excited to get to know you better. Curious. Are you following me for homeschool tips, energy hacks, funny mom life, or how to build a biz as a homeschool mom? Like that's not yours. is not going to say that, right? It's going to say something different, but like Find out why they're following you, right? Start a conversation, be interested in them and what they're about. 
Um, and then the final thing is obviously making the ask. Um, I just threw this invite together. You can do it however makes sense for you. Um, but again, we have to ask people if they're interested in the business or the products in order to get a yes or a no. <laughs> like, I mean, again, most people just are not going to be like, hey, I saw you doing this new thing. Um, so this was just an example. Hey, not sure if you know, but I help moms make an income from home by sharing hormone safe products for in, on, and around your body. I think you could be amazing here. Would you be open to taking a look? No worries if not, right? Like that is not um, intrusive. That is not insulting. If someone takes this as an insult, they're probably not your person. Most people just respond, you know, oh, you know what? I might would take a look. I need to make a little extra income. Some are going to say, oh, not right now, you know, whatever. Like, but you have to, the more you ask and the more you have these conversations, yes, Kim, most people are kind. <laughs> like, and again, if they're not like, that's it makes your life easier because you're like, I'm not going to. I'm not going to reach back out to you. You're not my people. Um, so, so anyway, and it doesn't have to be that complicated, right? Like have a conversation with somebody and then say, Hey, like, this is what I do. Would you ever be open or taking a look like, and learn what they do. Right. So you just have to have those conversations going um, kind of all the time. And that's the point of having these engaging posts and knowing who your people are so that you're building these conversations. And that's what actually leads into sales and growing your team and that sort of thing. So, all right, that's all I got. Next. Awesome. I, I want to reiterate, I mean, everything happens in the DMs, everything. Literally, I was just looking because I wanted to show you guys. I had a, a reel that um, I did. Uh, it was three changes I made after breast cancer, C caption. And I had, and I talked about the um, cleaning product and I said, comment below clean if you want the details on what I use. I have 2,548 comments. Would you guys like to know how many people purchased that cleaning product? Zero. So I'm just, I want to be really real with you. Like people might see that and be like, oh my God, she must have a million sales. No, every single my one of my sales, every single one of my new advocates happens in a personal conversation. So I'm so like DMs is where everything happens always working from, you know, a list of people that you want to work with and just connecting with them and having conversations. So, so same thing, same thing happened with me. I have a viral video, viral reel. It's same thing about cleaning products and cancer. And I think there is like 700 comments, zero sales. Yeah. And the same thing happened to Cali Calabrese. And the reason we want to tell you this is because people like look and they're like, oh, well, that's how she broke that record or that's how she did that. No, that mm -hmm. honestly, when people put clean, that allows them to go from a cold market now to a warmer market. That's how I look at it. Like I get to deep dive, like who are these people like are my people? Who are these people I should be commenting on their stories? Who are these people I should pay attention to? That's really what happens when you have like a viral reel. Yeah, you get the, and the, and, and the beautiful thing is when you're niche down, and it's to what you specifically are interested in talking about. You know, these are your people too. You know, who cares if a reel goes viral that it has nothing to do with what you're sharing because they're going to end up not following or not engaging. So like having a niche down and having it. So this is very good for us because we are swapping out products due to cancer. So these are people that are probably interested in cleaning up their environment, probably due to a diagnosis or something else. So all right, let's talk about niching down. Um, this is so important. And again, this is can evolve in your business depending on where you are at, in your life. You know, in the beginning, it started for me, it was all fitness and health. And, and then for a while there, I was stuck. So sometimes we get in places that we feel like we are stuck, we are not growing. And so that means that you've got to kind of reevaluate things. So a few years ago, I was like, something's not working. And I pulled my audience and I said, would you guys like to hear more about intermittent fasting? Um, I think it was counting macros and one other thing. I can't remember what it was, but it was when intermittent fasting was all the rage. And so I was like, okay, I spent a weekend and I learned everything about intermittent fasting. I started doing it and I started talking about it and my Instagram account started to grow. So it really gets specific. So everything was about intermittent fasting. Then 
come breast cancer diagnosis. And again, this was a really hard time for me because I was still trying to work this other business that didn't really align with this diagnosis. So I was kind of stuck for a couple of years until I fully went breast cancer, fully cancer community. All I talk about is, is cancer on there. And so it now, it, and it took a year. So what I want to say to you, it takes patience. If you've been stuck for a while, it takes patience getting to a place where people are like, oh, okay, she is talking about cancer. And the algorithm is saying, okay, she's staying with this basic thing. We're going to put her out more to this. So just know that all of a sudden, after doing this for a year and being really consistent, now all of my reels really take off, but it took a while to get there. So self-reflection, what are you, what are you passionate about? You know, ask yourself. What is it that you're going through? Typically, it's a struggle, you know, and especially with the business we're in. Thank God. I mean, hormone issues, hormone health is all the rage right now. Like it couldn't be any better, whether you've gone through a diagnosis or prevention or you're trying to have babies or you're going into perimenopause. Or, I mean, like literally our, our, the people that we can reach is massive, but you want to niche down to whatever that is that you want to talk about. So really just self-reflection. What do you want to learn more about? That's another thing that I, like when I went into intermittent, intermittent fasting, I was like, I want to learn this. I want to dive into this. So what do you specifically want to learn more about? If it's not that you didn't go through a specific diagnosis or a struggle. Otherwise, I think the struggle is the best thing that you can be sharing as long as you've overcome it and have some tips. Um, conduct research. A great thing is searching on Instagram, looking up, um, explore different hashtags that are related, hormone health. Um, again, this is a great thing to ask Perplexity and ChatGPT. They can give you some really good ideas. Narrow your fo focus even more by you know, asking Instagram asking them what they want to hear more about. Who does your audience want? What do they want to hear more about? And again, I had to go through this phase of leaving one company and not talking about it, not leaving, but like a couple of years ago when I stopped actually working that business, I had to like know that I was going to have some followers leave me because I'm not talking about that anymore. And there's this transition piece to it, which is okay because now you're going to actually get the people you want. So ask your current followers, be patient, have fun, dig into it. Here's some examples um, that I, I looked up uh, using perplexity, I believe. So that have to do with hormone health specific, post birth control support, you know, focusing on people who just had a baby and how to get your hormones back. Um, Pre-pregnancy, cater the hormone health, you know, those that are having infertility issues, like what? That's what this company is about. Menopause support, plant-based vegan. Like I am so specific to breast cancer, which literally is, 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 this is just an added thing that I have to offer the clients, all the products at Hue and Grace that I'm so aligned with, but I'm not posting all about Hue and Grace. Like you hardly will say Hue and Grace. You won't see Hue and Grace on my feed. It's all breast cancer, but it's so specific to, um, and it makes, it goes along with what I'm sharing. Um, Anti-inflammatory diet, hormonal imbalances, skin and acne support, just get creative. Think about what you want to talk about. And even when you think, oh, I've got it, you could probably niche down even more. Okay. So I think that is it there. Yeah. Okay. So um, I wanted to talk about this in terms of social media and recruiting, because I feel like it's the one area that people like don't touch on. It's the area that they struggle with on social media when it comes to growing a team. And if you're not growing a team, that's absolutely fine. And that's the cool thing about this business. But I know that a lot of people are interested in growing a team. And I feel like one of the things I personally hated is the, you know, lock arms and sorority kind of selling of what a team is. And what I try to do in growing my team is I try to be the person that I want to attract the people who come into my business. And so 
Um, one of the things that, you know, I think it was AJ Verna who said, you know, your rep reputation is your brand. And I said this the other day, a lot of people I feel like in the last five years are tarnishing their reputation. They're going in all different directions. They're trying to throw things like on the wall just to make a buck. And I feel like people have worked so hard for your reputation and you can get rid of it like in a second in, in making that kind of choice. And so one of the things that I actually personally love about this company is we have a lot of people who have great reputations. They have good reputations at being hard workers and being, um, you know, servant based in how they lead and do things. And so most people are always seeking people to build their team, but I truly believe like who you are and your reputation should be building it, how you show up. And so the first thing I always ask people is like, who is your ideal advocate like what does that person look like what is that person seeking who is that person i have got to tell you my ideal advocate is probably somebody who would never do multi-level marketing and those people are always the ones that come into my business and so i can't use the same terminology i can't use the same way that people build their business to bring those people in what attributes do does this person have? And so I actually just did a post this morning about this. And I said, look, I said, most people don't build a team because they don't want to be out and, and have a true belief in something because so many people are afraid to stand for something. So many people are afraid. Well, like if I tell everybody I love this, then somebody's going to make fun of me or somebody's going to think it's not that great. But when it comes to building a business, People are not building a business with meek people. They're not building a business who don't have a strong belief in what they're doing, mainly because that's, you know, it's one thing to buy a product. It's a whole nother thing to get into entrepreneurship. That's like a huge, huge leap. And so they're looking to you to kind of set the path. And so what makes you tick as a leader? And then what problems will starting a business solve for them? And so this was a picture of me when I went to New York City. And, you know, what people don't know about me is like when we went into the pandemic, I became like a recluse. Like I literally didn't leave my house. The only time I left my house was like to go for my kids. I went through a divorce and I feel like my whole life was like going to be watching Law and Order SVU with my dogs. And I talked about how, like, since I joined this company, I've been to Scottsdale, I've been to New York City, I've been to Hawaii, I've like literally had a reason to leave my house. And, you know, next month, I'm going to go to to Minneapolis, and then I'm going to go to Nashville. And so just sharing that story taps in to the loneliness that some other people might have that they want to get out and do that. Um, another problem that seems to be prevalent with people my age, because I'm going to be 53 next week, um, people are worried about retirement. People are like, wait a minute, like I went, I had to go through my retirement, you know, during the pandemic. And um, it's more expensive to live. I have a lot of women who they don't want to cut back when they retire. And so I talk about things like that, that starts that conversation. And then I always feel like people usually join people who are goal driven. And so this is a picture of like my, um, the side that I let people know that every month I set goals every month that I'm always like checking it. And here's the thing, when I share that, I don't share like, what's your goal for your business? I talk about what's your goal in life? Do you have something that like you keep in front of you that you see? Because then you're going to start attracting those kinds of people. And then I kind of always, I bet you, you have a ton of stories in your life of when you had to be resilient, of when you had to take charge, of when you had to be a leader. Those stories are the ones that are going to connect, not, hey, come listen to my business opportunity, right? That's part of it. But if you haven't built a foundation of who you are, why somebody would join a business, you know, then when you, you know, like Stephanie said, then when you say like, hey, I have this opportunity, would you take a look at it? People have like some basis to be like, oh, you know what? She shared about like, okay, I'll look at it, you know, in, in doing that. And so 
this is something that I really think is missing in a lot of people's social media when they're trying to build a business. And what they're doing is like, you know, they're taking the typical, like I'm on a call and I'm doing this, but like, they're not talking about the attributes. They're not talking about the qualities. They're not talking about who they are as a person. And, and they're not talking about their, their belief in doing this. Like, you know, Sarah likes to say all the time, it's not about us. It's not about us. It's not about me. I personally think that everyone should be looking at this opportunity. I feel like, uh, I, I personally feel like I try to tell people it's like, you know, when people sat around with Microsoft and Facebook and they were like, Hey, do you want to like get in on this or whatever? Like, I truly feel like that's what, um, this is. And then the next slide is we talked a lot about niches, but I personally think all 10, authenticity is in, in 2024. And, you know, like Jen said, even if you have a small following on social media, Instagram is wants you to stay on, they want you to use it. And so this is your chance to show up. And so one of the things that I think everyone can do is be consistent. Like if there's anything people know about me in 13 years, they know this girl's going to show up. <laughs> she might not show up. She might show up with like half her lash off or whatever and her hair crazy, but she's going to show up. And so when you show up and you're consistent, people are like, they can start to trust you. I always make a joke that it's like kind of like the baby daddy or like your ex that comes and like, here's the flowers and I'm, I'm, I'm a changed man and please come get me, whatever. And then you disappear for two weeks again. And so you're kind of talking to your audience and telling your audience, you can't be trusted. You're not going to show up. You don't believe about that. And then, um, People need to buy into why you're doing the business. They want to know, you know, they don't want you to disappear. And so, you know, my son has, has gone through cancer treatment for the past three months. And so like, I would always post these pictures of me showing up and I was actually on social media less. Um, and here's the good thing. You don't have to be on social media all the time to be effective. You know, like I have found that, when my stories run out, more people see them rather than constantly, you know, being on social media for 24 hours. And then the last thing I would say is like, be yourself so that the people are meant to find you. Like, you know, I always say to people, people come like, there's three things that people know about me. They either just don't know me and they don't have an opinion. They really don't like me or they really like me. Like there's no middle. <laughs> people either really like me or really don't like me. And that's the greatest thing because then you're going to find your like-minded people. You're going to find your business partners. You're going to find doing this business is a joy. Like, the people who join my business in this company, as opposed to the previous company, it's so much greater. It's less drama. It's more enjoyment because I think I pretty much kind of shared who I was. And so therefore those people start to kind of come forward. Awesome. I love that so much. Oh my gosh. It's exactly like you need to be you. You don't have to try to be anybody else, but yourself. And you might learn, get some ideas from other people, but then take it and make it your own and just be you. Um, I want to talk about common mistakes, but I want you first to just take a breath and like, don't think if you're so overwhelmed and you're at the beginning of all of this and you're like, uh, maybe re-listen to this and take one thing at a time. And then change that and then go to the next thing. And you know what I mean? You're like, don't overwhelm yourself with all this because there's a lot of information. And that when I was new, I would have been like, oh my God, where do I even start? Start with one thing that seems like literally walk away. When we get finished, start, do something, change something. Because I know I'm, I've been there where I've taken notes and then I, then I walk away to take a little break and then I don't do anything. So literally something from your notes that resonated with you today, do it change whatever you want, if it, whether it's your profile. So that's the first mistake I'll kind of go through is not optimizing that profile. Like we talked in the beginning, make sure it's searchable, use perplexity, P E R plexity, P L E X I T Y.com. You don't need to pay for it. Get the free one. They can help you come up with a really good profile. Um, make sure your picture's good. 
and make sure you just have those, you know, the, the highlights. Don't worry about that. That's not anything urgent or the maybe go through your pin posts or maybe today you're going to do an about you. Like people want to know what you're doing and then you can pin that to the first one. So just getting your profile for optimization. Um, the second thing is inconsistent posting. But like Kim said, this doesn't mean you post all the time. And, and actually, that can be one of the mistakes too, is posting too much, especially on stories. I will tell you right now, the beautiful thing is stories, you should be doing less stories, like literally two to four a day. Because if you have too many stories, and think about you guys, as you're looking at social media, and if you look at somebody that has a bunch of stories, you're sliding right past them. You don't have time to look at all their stories. So less is more. And just making sure that you're, you're, the posting that you are doing is either entertaining or it's funny, like shareable, it's education and, you know, something they're going to get out of. So just, and, and don't overcomplicate it. Maybe set a time where you can figure out what your schedule is going to be. But then if something happens in life, which it does, it's okay if you miss a day or two. So don't worry about it. The third mistake is buying followers. That's I think old, but if you did that, if you did that a while ago, and you're stuck at, I was listening to something today. And if you're stuck and you bought followers a while ago, there's almost right now, I mean, if you only have like 500 or to a thousand and your account's doing nothing, you might want to start over because like Kim and I were just saying zero to 500 is what Instagram likes right now. And that's who they're putting out into the forefront because they also want you they want you to stick around. So just know that. Um, ignoring engagement, interacting is so important with every single person, especially like if you only have two two likes, message those people. They want, they're liking your stuff for a reason. And if you have a lot of comments, I really do recommend many chat. Is anybody else using many chat? Kind of gotta be careful with it. You do, but many chat does make it easier because every time you, somebody comments and you comment back, that shows more comments, right? So you want to make sure you're always commenting back to each person. Don't just like on it. You want to comment back and engage with them. And then again, taking those conversations into the DM when you can. Um, posting without captions. I mean, it's okay to do that every once in a while to make it, you know, short and sweet. Um, but also it's right now reels between seven seconds around that seven second mark is great Two thirty, but more on the like less is more. And, um, if you say the info is in the caption, you know, some people get annoyed by it, but if it's something that they really want to know about, like the three biggest mistakes are what I think, um, I think I did one about why I think I got cancer. Are you kidding me? Like everybody wanted to know that. So they go into the captions. So what that means is they're on your post longer. So the watch time is more. And right now, algorithm likes watch time. And if the more watches, the wa more watch time you have, the more you're going to be pushed out. So people are doing those one second, like blinking ones. And if you've done it fine, but I will tell you that a lot of people don't love that. I don't know why. This is just what I'm getting from my research. And sometimes people will even unfollow. I don't know why, but I was, cause I actually had it on my list to do. And I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do it. But that's one of those reels that, you know, they're, they're watching that a lot, you know, 10 times. So it's like, but still it's only one second. Okay. Um, poor quality content. It, it doesn't need to be perfect. Like, do not think about the aesthetics and, and everything needs to be perfect. I actually think that doesn't look as well. Like being you being raw is, um, best, but just also making it, you know, as good as you can, but it doesn't need to be perfect. Again, overposting was one of them. And we already talked about that. And the last one is hashtags. I want to, I didn't even put this on the slide, but I want to quickly talk about hashtags. They can be good, but they can also be bad. So there can be banned hashtags. And if you're using them, you're, you are not getting out there. An easy way to figure out what is banned hashtags, putting it into perplexity. It will literally tell you what banned hashtags are. I hardly ever use hashtags. If I do, it's like three. It's breast cancer, breast cancer community, cancer support, but just a few. Plug whatever you're using into perplexity to find out. And 
The other thing, you don't want to just copy and paste and use the same hashtags every time. Instagram knows that too. Change it up. Just use a few at a time, but just double check your hashtags. Um, one other thing, I just saw this this morning, so I thought I would share it with you guys. You don't have to, but there's a five-day content creation challenge that Brock and Shalene are doing. It's totally free. It's five days. It starts July 29th, and, and they're going to help. I don't know what it's all about, but... If you guys are interested in that, I can share the link in the chat. Just let me know. But that's how all I have. Any questions? You guys want that chat? I mean, that link. Okay. Let me grab it. There's the link for perplexity in the chat. And then here is the link for that five-day challenge. I was like, oh, sweet. Yeah, I'm going to do this. And I was like, this is perfect to share with you guys today. Whoops, is it not going? Oh, yeah. Hold on. I'm sorry. Any questions as I'm getting this? No, okay. I, Quick question. Is perplex, perplexity the same thing as chat GPT? Did I hear you say that? No. Okay. Totally different. And the, the, um, I don't know why it's not letting me post this in the chat because you guys don't see it yet. Right. Um, no. So chat GPT, I don't know why I, I I'll share the link in our team hub. So chat GPT is, um, um, actually, everything is a year out or from a year ago. They're not current and they don't have studies. So if it's something where you want like a PubMed study, so chat GPT I use for maybe content creation, making sure I've got the spelling correct or, you know, making this caption sound better, you know, something like that is what I use chat GPT with for perplexity is like, I want to study on why soy is okay for breast cancer. And then not only does it give you the information, it'll break it down for you, but then it also attaches like PubMed studies. Like this is where when people ask us about, you know, ingredients in our products, like you can literally put it into perplexity and it searches. I, I love perplexity so much more, but I still use them both. Oh, you got it, Jamie. All right, guys, pick their brains. If there's anything you want to learn more from Kim, Stephanie, or Jen, there's no question off the table right now. And we're going to wrap up in a minute, but awkward teacher pause here while you find your courage. Um, it's so funny. This is what uh, they, I, this was of this podcast that I was listening to today. Um, they said that, Ideal length for a reel is you want to think of it like a mini skirt, that it's long enough to cover what you need to cover, but still short enough to hold their attention. <laughs> I thought that was funny. That's a cute analogy. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I have so many notes. I learned so much. There's a lot of stuff, even that like I was like, oh, I haven't thought about this in a while. That's a great reminder. So um, I... Appreciate Jen that you you said to take a breath because <laughs> I know that it can feel like overwhelming because we want to do this well, right? And so like just know this is there, it's also a very forgiving platform. Like this is also a very yeah. forgiving fluid thing. At any point you can just stop in your tracks and go, mm, this isn't working. I'm gonna pivot. I'm gonna try something different. Or like that fell flat. Let me try it. You can delete. Like there's this really beautiful button called the mm -hmm. delete button. Like you can do so much with this. So Thank you for this, ladies. This was so great. Oh, go ahead, Claudia. Yes. I have one last question. I just remembered. Um, so you mentioned something about um, starting all over with your Instagram. And why is it that you suggested that again? I kind of caught it at the end. I was, I thought this was a recording for some reason. Yeah. I'm trying to <laughs> Let's go back. Well, well, first of all, you it just know that my account has been stuck many times. And I've, I've, I've been okay. I've never bought followers, but if you ever did anything, like definitely buying followers is one that Instagram recognizes. They know, I don't know how they know, but somehow they know this. And if your account is getting nothing, 
you're getting no engagement, nothing is working. You've stayed consistent. You've niched down. You've changed your bio. Like everything looks good. And you're like, I am getting nothing. There, You could potentially close your account and start over. Or maybe not close it. Maybe just start over. You know, with a different email address, start a new account and, and just start a new one if you want. If you are literally getting nothing and you've tried everything for years. Because right yeah. now... Instagram is, it is, they're giving everything over to the zero to 500 is gets pushed out most because they want the people who have zero to 500 followers to stay. So that is what Instagram is currently doing. That could change, but right now that's what they're doing. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Last call for questions. Um, we have Miriam Molina today that's going to be speaking about her rise to SMT really, like just swiftly, strongly. So she'll be sharing how she did that. I think that's in three hours at 3 p.m. East Coast time. So um, we always try to make events in the team page for with all the info. So check events in the team hub. And um, the recording of this will be in our, in our spreadsheet um, sometime today or tomorrow. Okay. Thanks, ladies. Bye. Everyone. Bye, guys.